Hey everybody, Organized Biology here, and today we're talking about the bore and the Haldane effects, but at the lungs, okay? So when we zoom in at the lungs, we're going to look at the alveoli, so the little air sacs of the lungs, as they're butted up against the capillaries that are going to be lining those alveoli. So therefore, if you think about it, we want to, at the lungs, maximize how much oxygen we're going to pick up. That's why you breathe in, right? And we're going to try to maximize carbon dioxide drop-off so that we can breathe it out, okay? So what's bringing it in and dropping it off? Well, the red blood cell. Now, before we get into the details about how these two effects actually maximize these two things, we have to remember what we talked about in the previous video. If you haven't already watched it, it's right here. Please click that, watch that first so that this makes sense. So we had, at the tissue level, this red blood cell went to the tissues and picked up a massive amount of carbon dioxide, right? Because the tissues made carbon dioxide. Grabbed it, combined it with water, which is always present, and it was converted by an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase into carbonic acid. Acids split apart into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate in this case. That's the conjugate base. But I want you to key into the hydrogen ion. That made that blood area very acidic because the hydrogen ions were present, right? And we remember that that helped kick oxygen off. CO2 came in, hydrogen bound to the hemoglobin molecule. Okay, and then that bicarbonate actually shifted with chlorine ions and popped in. That was called the chloride shift. Now that was at the tissues, right? So I told you in the previous video, we're gonna reverse all of it today. So let's get started. So we're gonna key into the Bohr effect first. Now remember the Bohr effect, when it was really acidic at the tissues, it was kicking off the oxygen up from the hemoglobin, right? But in this case, what do we wanna do with the oxygen? Well, we want to maximize its pickup by the hemoglobin, right? So how do we do that? Well, here's the thing. We will have a concentration gradient of carbon dioxide. So I want you to look at carbon dioxide's concentration gradient, specifically in terms of partial pressure. So it's just the pressure of carbon dioxide in different spaces. The bloodstream right now, we see the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is relatively high, 40 millimeters of mercury. That's a pretty good amount of pressure. Whereas in the alveoli, the little air sacs of the lungs is insanely low. That's because the atmosphere that we're around and we breathe all the air in from has very, very low amounts of carbon dioxide, which is a good thing because now there's this gradient, right? So there's gonna be some carbon dioxide floating out here that hasn't attached to hemoglobin or any other cases, and it is going to begin leaving, okay, leaving the blood supply and the plasma, and it's going to actually go into the alveoli ever so slightly. Now here's the thing. This takes a little bit of thinking. If we diminish the amount of CO2 here, all righty, so we decrease this amount right here, what happens is chemical reactions like to flow from where there's a lot of product to where there's a little product, okay, from high to low once again. So if I'm telling you some CO2 is leaving, we're diminishing CO2. So therefore, in this reaction, where is it going to go? Well, check this out. The arrows will flip. So how did that happen? Well, there are plenty of hydrogen ions that we're holding onto the hemoglobin, right? And there's plenty of bicarbonate. So if we have a lot of those things, not much of the carbon dioxide, what's going to happen is everything's going to flow the opposite direction. So I'm going to shift this arrow. Bicarb is going to come back in. Chlorine is actually going to shift out. And also the hydrogen ions attached to the hemoglobin are going to pop over here. And these two guys, since they're in heavy abundance, are going to combine back into carbonic acid and carbonic anhydrase flips the script. Instead of pushing it that way, it'll force it this way, creating carbon dioxide and water. So what's interesting now, since we've made carbon dioxide and water, now whatever carbon dioxide just got freed will actually leave into the alveoli. Wow, how fascinating, right? So we flipped everything. Now, here's the thing. Bohr effect, right, deals with acidity. What happened to the hydrogen ions now that we did the reaction that direction? Well, I don't see any hydrogen ions anymore on this part of the reaction, right? So therefore, we diminish the amount of hydrogen ions in the solution. If we do that, what does oxygen want to do? It wants to bind to our hemoglobin again, because now it's free. Yeah? So I want you to write what the Bohr effect is at the lung tissue here. So I'm going to point it out right here. So since we have less hydrogen ions, less acid, the more oxygen will want to bind to hemoglobin. So we're basically making these available receptors from the hemoglobin to come and grab oxygen, okay? And it's because it is less acidic due to these hydrogen ions being converted back the other direction, the carbon dioxide leaving, okay? So now we have available spots for oxygen, but how do we get the oxygen in? Well, look at the gradients once again. We have a relatively low amount of oxygen here, 45 millimeters of mercury, so there's still some oxygen here, but not much compared to 
the air we breathe. There's 120 millimeters of mercury worth of pressure of oxygen in your lungs. That's because there's a lot of oxygen in the atmosphere. Thank goodness for that. Okay, so we want to keep it that way. So this oxygen, high pressure here, relatively low pressure in this bloodstream in the capillaries. So therefore, oxygen, I'm going to draw it down here, is going to want to diffuse high to low into this blood supply and then onto that hemoglobin molecule. Now remember, as oxygen begins to bind and bind and bind, we remember the Haldane effect. So the Haldane effect states this in this case. The more oxygen begins to bind to hemoglobin, the less carbon dioxide wants to bind to hemoglobin. So basically, as oxygen is starting to diffuse into this red blood cell, what's happening is the CO2 is like, no, 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 I don't like hanging out with oxygen, so I'm just going to pop off and pop off. So that allows for more oxygen to attach and CO2 is going to detach. And guess what? That process of the Haldane effect also allows CO2 to continue leaving into the lungs. So at the same time, the Bohr effect, because it's less acidic, the more oxygen wants to bind there, down its concentration gradient, right? But as the oxygen begins to bind, the Haldane effect kicks in, and the CO2 leaves because it doesn't like oxygen being in there, right? So CO2 leaving, exacerbates it, CO2 continues to leave, more of the hydrogen ions get converted, and CO2 continues to leave, oxygen continues to bind, and we've maximized oxygen pickup, and we've maximized CO2 drop-off. So once again, if this has been helpful, please subscribe to this channel, like the video, and check out my other videos on the cardiovascular system, on blood, as well as the previous video if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.